Hello, my name is Michael Lee of the Source Code Group, and this is Branch Rules, um, the completed design. So I updated all the issues related to Branch Rules um, editing, and this uh, scope is just editing Branch Rules. Uh, handling inheritance or group level rules will be handled in a separate issue. Um, so currently we have Branch Rules, um, and as we expand them out, uh, recently um, there was a change to put all these into a GL cards uh, layout, so that's why it looks like this. Um, so, viewing branch rules, and this is where the new stuff that's happening is that we're gonna take what we have right now, where we redirect people to um, protect the branches or the merge request um, approvals area, and we're actually gonna implement editing. Um, th this here is. Um, the updated read-only views so I think we can handle that in a separate issue to like uh, update this styling but um, generally it's kind of the same there so we're just going to focus more on uh, the editing experience and perhaps during the editing experiences when we'll, we'll update uh, the read-only views because they're very very similar between read-only and the editing where it's mainly these actions here like edit and like these um, actions are hidden in and displayed. So let's get into it. Um, we'll, go, we'll do the most complex one. Um, you don't have any branch rules in the repository. You have branch name, branch pattern. So you click on this, you can choose the different types. So we'll do branch name and branch pattern first. Uh, out comes a modal and that allows you to select a branch name or you know, use a pattern um, as you're clicking it uh, there's a list of all the different branches that you can choose from as you type um, it will filter auto filter as you type and once we detect that there's a star then we uh, display the wildcard option and so let's say I selected that and I say create branch rule that creates a branch rule like this um, if I was going to edit that um, a modal pops up with the update uh, target branch and then you would press update and then that changes. Um, all changes will then have a toast uh, to give the user feedback on what the change was and if possible undo button to revert them back to the previous. Um, so let's get back into um, the golden path here. Uh, this is the default setup for branch protections allowed to merge admins and maintainers. Um, and now we're going to start editing that. I click on edit and then this is says edit allowed to merge. Um, what we did from the current um, experience of editing allowed to merge, which is just one drop down, is actually splitting the responsibility of that one drop down to the things that you can actually select roles. Um, if we want to introduce more roles through RBAC um, that are applicable here or other roles that uh, make sense to add here, um, we can add those easily. Uh, users and groups, um, we recently added this filter to scope the search, so that's in there. And you just search to add users and the same thing for groups. As they get added, um, the number here gets incremented, um, removing people here uh, there's no feedback at this stage. Uh, you just remove people as, at will because um, you can always press cancel and then that reverts you back to the previous state. Um, so there's no need for any um, toast at this level. So um, just add and remove as, as you're happy. Once you're happy, you click save changes and we can see that allowed to merge up, uh, got updated and you can undo and revert back to your previous state. So now we have these two things here. Um, the extra thing I added in here that's different from the current branch protection is this extra line. Merge requests are required for changes except for those allowed to push and merge. So the idea here is to make it explicit that with branch protections, all changes go through um, a merge request. And anyone that's um, in this list act as a bypass or they're like the exception to the rule. So these are the people who are actually allowed to push and merge. So trying to make that more clear here, otherwise without it, you kind of guess why this 
allowed to push and merge um, even exists. Um, the empty state here is actually says everyone is required to submit a merge request for changes. And that's true. Um, if no one's allowed to push, everyone is required to submit a merge request. So I think spelling all those things out uh, makes this experience a little bit more, uh, more clear. Um, once again, if I press edit here, um, I'm presented with this uh, screen, very similar from before. Um, you know, I select whatever I want. Um, the difference with push is that you're also allowed to add deploy keys. So that's why th this exists here. Um, and then, yeah, there should be the scope part here as well. Um, forgot to add that in. We'll do that later. Um, and then once that's added in, you get uh, displayed here. So currently we display everything in a drop down. And if it's, you know, developers and maintainers, that's already getting truncated. This spells everything out. So at a glance, you can see what your branch protections are. Because I have people who are allowed to push here, the option to allow to force push appears. Um, previously, it was hidden. Like there's no point of having that if no one can push. So this exposes that ability to say that all users who are allowed to with push access are allowed to force push. So that's there. Um, if I activate it, then I get um, allowed to force pushes enabled. And the same thing with uh, required code owners approval. If I toggle that, I get feedback from the toast to say that's enabled. And that is the branch rules editing experience. Now we're going to move on to editing the number of required approvers. So at the moment, we have all eligible users as like the rule and approvals required is uh, zero by default. Um, I'm proposing that we add a name called minimum required approvals so that we, if we handle this at a group level, we can set this rule up at the group level and that will cascade down. But this is a clear name about what it is. Um, you can change the number in here and then that gets the toast update. And then, and that's that simple rule. If you want to add a custom rule where you have um, different users and groups, uh, that's in this add button here and you can do add approval rule, add coverage check rule. So we go down with the add approval. Um, we have the rule name, the number of required approvals. You can change that numbers, users, groups, uh, and then you just add them like before, and then you save your changes. Uh, with coverage check, this is one where it's like a standard one, and it, it has a description about this is for when it decreases in test coverage, that's when it's run. And then you can select those people in there as well. Um, upon uh, approval rule being added, uh, there's feedback through the toast once again, and then you can see all your users here. The way we present users and groups is consistent between uh, protected branches and merge request approvals, and I think that's good from just a consistency standpoint. Mm. Um, if you update an approval rule, uh, the toast changes to updated. Um, if you delete our approvers, um, you know, if I deleted the front end, um, it's a similar model that we have now. Uh, it's just split up the sentences, but it, you know the current one would work as well. Uh, remove approvers, and you get the toast as well, and that approval group is gone. Um, so the logic and the functionality of things haven't changed too much. It's just the way the UI works. Uh, with status checks, this one's a little bit more simple. Add status check. Um, what was in a modal now lives in a drawer um, in the same fields. Nothing has changed there. You can add a status check. Um, and then once that's done, um, it gets added. And then you can see a status check added. Um, if you remove that, um, you're about to remove this status check. If you, once upon removal, you get that uh, status check deleted. Um, with branch rules, um, when you delete them, uh, you're going to delete a branch rule. This action can't be undone. Upon deletion, uh, the user is directed back to the branch rules list in settings and repository. Um, the other thing that we need to talk about 
is the scenario of all branches and all protective branches. These are more used for merge request approvals <coughs> and status checks. Um, so there's no branch protection um, settings on these ones, and the target branches is fixed to all branches, and this one's fixed to all protective branches. And same thing as before, you can add and change merge request approvals and status checks, but the scope is limited in what um, the target is defined as all protective branches or all branches. And that is accessible from the list here of branch rules when you want to add a rule, whether you want to target all branches, all protective branches, it's done there. Um, last bit of information is that in merge request approvals, when there are many people, so uh, in a scenario where there's like more than 10, 10 elements here, um, we will truncate it to say show all 17, as in this is the number of everyone uh, resolved. Uh, so, you know, with the groups and users, uh, if there's more than 10 elements, and this example is not that good because I only have four, but um, there's enough space to display 10. But once it reaches 10, then we add this link. Uh, clicking on the link will display a modal. And this will allow users to scroll and see who's in the group. Um, this is one implementation. Another implementation is potentially to put it inside uh, drawer and I think that's something we can revisit once we get into the implementation phase to see which one feels better um, is, and is usable um, so that is editing branch rules um, please let me know if you have any questions um, all the issues have been updated and thank you very much